Hey friends, welcome back. So I know you've heard about menopause and andropause, but in today's video, we're gonna talk about adrenopause. You're like, adrenopause? Mike, are you over here making stuff up? I am not making stuff up, I swear. This is what scientists have referred to when the adrenals go into a state of decline. They, the androgens from the adrenal cortex here, this is the adrenal gland. As you know, they sit sort of on top of the kidneys. You have two adrenal glands you go through adrenopause. And this is really, really important. I can't underemphasize this enough for postmenopausal women because about 75% of the estrogens and the androgens that are made for women, uh, especially after menopause, come from the adrenals. So when the adrenals go through this natural state of decline, and this can vary based upon life load, based upon stressors, perceived and actual stressors, travel schedules, uh, disease states, overall metabolic health. Th this can, I've seen individuals in their 20s that have futures of adrenopause, meaning that they have low DHA, they have low cortisol, they have a really low cortisol awakening response. They are looking tired, they cannot hang on to muscle, they don't have libido or sex drive, their hair is falling out. All these things can be linked to this. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. I think it's just something that you should put on your radar. We're gonna talk about some blood tests that you should be aware of, especially for men over 40 and women who have been through menopause. So let's talk a little bit more about the adrenal glands, some anatomy, some of the structures here, and where the different hormones are made and some things you should know about, okay? So you have within the cortex, let's first talk about the adrenal medulla. This is the most inner portion of the adrenal gland. This is where your catecholamines, part of which, your catecholamines are, are also released in the brain. But the adrenal glands make norepinephrine and epinephrine, also known as adrenaline and noradrenaline. So that's the innermost portion of the adrenal medulla. You also have what's known as the uh, zona reticularis and the zona fasciculata, okay? So we have here, we have zona ZF. So this is where cortisol is released. Then in the innermost portion of the adrenal cortex, this is the zona reticularis. As if, since you've watched my videos before, you know I'm not the best with drawing, but you get the idea, okay? So the zona fasciculatus, that's where cortisol and, and the other corticosteroids are being released, okay? Many of us think that cortisol is bad, it's associated with all these problems. Look, you don't want cortisol to be really low, you don't want it to be really high. You want a nice diurnal rhythm of cortisol, okay? You want, if this is on the y-axis, this is you know, let's just say this is 8 uh, a.m. and this is 8 uh, uh, p.m. here. You want cortisol to do something like this. You want high cortisol in the morning and you want it to go down at night. What happens with some people is they have really low cortisol and then it starts to go up. And this is sort of an inverted flipped pattern. And this is going to be I'm tired and I'm wired, right? I should be going to bed around 8, 9, 10 o'clock, but my cortisol is so high so I feel like crap so I can't sleep. But what also happens, my friends, is within this uh, zona reticularis, which is where DHEA, which is sort of this mother hormone that feeds into both estrogens and, and other androgens, we've talked about this before on other videos, this region of the adrenal glands can sort of atrophy or go into this adrenopause, which can be linked with suboptimal testosterone, poor immunologic responses, aberrant changes in estrogen, vaginal dryness, and all these things. So this is something we should be more aware of, we should pay more attention to. But before we continue on and talk about what to test, when to dose DHA, some other things to consider, first I wanna welcome you all back. It's Mike here, thanks as always for being here. Thank you for hitting that like button, and also if you're enjoying this content, please leave a comment below and share this directly, say as a text message or a DM, to someone that you know that might benefit from this information. Again, if they're getting some visceral fat, if they're not recovering from exercise, if people feel tired all the time, they should be aware about adrenopause and consider taking potentially adrenal cortex, adrenal glandulars, we're gonna talk about DHEA and much more. And so what I'll do is link solutions to supplements that I have personally formulated, created, that have helped me and my clients over the years over at Myoscience, so links will be below to that. You can use the coupon code PODCAST to save. Okay, so let's dive into this. So what happens when individuals go through this state of adrenopause and what are some of the ways that you can test for this? So as I mentioned, just like with menopause, some women don't go through menopause until they're in their 50s. Some women in their mid-30s are already in, their, in perimenopause. So adrenopause is somewhat similar to that in the sense that there's no real 
sort of uh, definitive you know, year chronologically when individuals go through this, but it depends upon their health, their lifestyle, their perceived and actual stressors and their life load. Some people notice their DHA levels start to decline. Okay, so if we just, this is cortisol here, cortisol. This is DHEA. Uh, and these are, this is, these are arbitrary numbers because we're going quick. We're just giving you a 10 minute video here. So this is uh, 20 years old and this is 70 years old on the X axis, on the Y axis. This is an arbitrary DHEA level, okay? So it's starting to go like this. So DHEA, which again, is the mother sort of hormone um, that, gets, that gets metabolized into testosterone, into dihydrotestosterone, into estrogens, that feeds into that androgen pool. But the thing about DHEA is it also is a ligand itself. It latches onto receptors, it affects immunologic health, it affects the brain tissue, it affects various aspects of physiology. So it's very helpful, but it starts to decline here. Now the rate of decline, this could be, this could be Jim, okay? This could be Sally, right? And so Sally is noticing a sort of acceleration of the adrenopause because maybe she's on her iPhone at night. Maybe she eats a lot of processed food. Maybe she does not exercise. Um, maybe, uh, you know, she doesn't manage her stress. Maybe she's never done any, you know, breath work or meditation or been into a sauna, right? So, you know, and, and you could have Scott here. So Scott um, does all sorts of resistance training, eats a high protein diet, gets good sleep. He's got all his devices turned off at 9 p.m. and so forth. So he's not experiencing the rate of adrenopause, you know, compared to Jim and Sally, it's individual. So we need to understand that the rate of DHA decline is individual depending upon your lifestyle, okay? So now that we understand sort of the big picture, we know that naturally DHA levels decline. We know DHA feeds into androgens, especially, and also estrogens for women, especially postmenopausal women, men over 40, very important. Before any men go on HRT, they should definitely consider testing and supplementing with DHA first. You know, I see many people, and I've gotten emails from people, oh, my clinic that I go to has me on HRT and they told me not to consider DHEA. That's like, okay, imagine spending $10,000 to fertilize your lawn and you live in LA, but you're like, I'm gonna save, I'm not gonna water my lawn. I'm just gonna fertilize it, okay? You can see here how you're getting ahead of yourself. Maybe before you spend a lot of money on fertilizer, start with just watering, start with compost or something to that effect. So you wouldn't want to administer hormones like testosterone, like estrogen, before even considering DHA, because those are upstream. And if, if the upstream metabolites are low, then why would you give the downstream metabolites first? Okay, so we need to understand that, that this is something we should consider. So how do you test for this? There's a few different ways. You can do serum DHA sulfate, because as we've talked about before, DHA is in equilibrium with DHAS. So you have DHA can be rapidly sulfated into the storage form known as DHA sulfate. So when you go to the doctor and you say, hey doc, I heard about this thing called adrenopause. I'm feeling a little lethargic. I'm losing muscle mass. I don't have a sex drive. You know, I wanna see how my DH, you know, where my DHA levels are at. You, you're gonna test for the DHA sulfate, okay? That is in the bloodstream, very affordable. I think the wholesale cost on this is around $15. Pretty much every major commercial lab throughout the world can do this. You can also go to the Dutch test. They have the Dutch Plus Complete, which looks at your cortisol awakening response. It looks at DHA, it looks at melatonin. Uh, for women that are still menstruating, it can look at you know, progesterone and all of this, and it also looks at your estrogen metabolites. That's a great place to start as well, especially if you're having symptoms. You know, you're having fatigue issues, you're having fertility issues, you're experiencing sleeplessness, all of that. I think it's a really good thing to consider, okay? Now, let's say you do this and you're like, look, my cortisol awakening response is totally screwed up. My DHA levels are low. What do I do? Well, here's what I generally recommend. And this is just a broad brush stroke. As always, friends, these videos are not intended to diagnose, cure, treat, or prevent any disease. And the statements here are not approved by the FDA. I'm just giving you general advice. What I suggest here is adrenal glandulars in the morning. You can also do thyroid extracts in the morning and I've changed my mind on this, DHA at night. I used to recommend to many of you 
taking DHA in the morning. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. However, there's some animal model studies. This is not in humans, but I think we can glean some research from this. Animal model studies showing that taking DHEA can help to antagonize cortisol a little bit. And so for a lot of people that have a poor cortisol awakening response in the morning and have this inverted pattern because they're on the devices and phones at night and being really stressed out and having their late meal because when you eat, you increase cortisol in the post-meal window, okay? So if you can take DHEA here, you can help to blunt some of the cortisol rise in the evening. And so I've changed my mind again on the dosing of when to take DHA. I now recommend, and it's not that it's bad in the morning, some studies have administered DHA in the morning as well, but I now recommend taking DHA in the evening, okay? Because actually that's when a lot of your hormones are being synthesized in your highest levels, especially for men, testosterone and all that are in the morning. So if you could take it in the evening time before bed, it can um, help with circadian rhythms uh, as well. So as we've talked about on other videos, how much to take. Again, it's best to work with your doctor on this, but a general rule of thumb to start for men, 10 milligrams per decade of life. 40 year old men take 40 milligrams of DHA. For women, it's 25% of that. 40 year old women can start out at roughly 10 milligrams of DHA. Now this varies again, based upon history of insulin resistance. If you have PCOS, insulin resistance, if you had gestational diabetes uh, in your early 20s or 30s, and you're in your 40s, you might want to consider taking other things like berberine or myelinositol, working on exercise, and a low-carb diet because if you have insulin resistance and you're a woman and you give yourself DHA, that can increase levels of androgens that are already high due to the, the insulin resistance physiology, okay? So that's the big picture overview. You now know how to test, whether it's a serum DHA test, DHA sulfate, or you do the uh, cortisol awakening response, the Dutch test. That's another great tool. Uh, you now know the dosing, you know the circadian rhythm uh, of that. And by taking uh, cortisol, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, adrenal glandular extracts in the morning, you can help the adrenal glands uh, as well. Now, another simple strategy is to get morning light and evening sunlight as well, because we know that's sort of that low solar exposure Andrew Huberman and other folks have been talking about this extensively. This can help to stimulate that cortisol awakening response and help the retinal communication to your brain to uh, entrain your body's circadian clock system. Now, this is really important because the amplitude and the intensity of your circadian clock system gets muted over time as you age. So you really want to be you know, more mindful of this. The people that should be more mindful about getting light exposure in the morning and then that evening sunlight exposure as well, uh, later in the day, are people over the age of 40, 50 and beyond, beyond mid midlife, because that's when the circadian uh, clock system becomes wonky. That's really actually where sleep issues sort of start. You know, people are like, gosh, when I was younger, I used to like fall asleep in the car, fall asleep on an airplane, but now I, I, I go to bed for an hour and I'm up wide awake and I think it's like, ready to, I'm ready to go and start the day and it's only one in the morning, like what's going on? That is, could be hormonal issues, uh, but that also is, is this, uh, aberrations in the intensity of the circadian clock system. So we need to be aware of that. Um, but just remember, just big picture, the adrenal cortex and cortisol are not bad. We want cortisol to increase in the morning. We don't want this inverted cortisol pattern that many people have. And we also know that there's another aspect of the adrenal glands called the zona reticularis, which is where DHA is released. DHA is an androgen that contributes to your androgen pool very important for postmenopausal women, very important for men, and something to consider. So, friends, hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully it gave you a better insight and appreciation for the adrenal glands and something to consider. It's not just menopause, it's not just andropause, you have adrenopause going on. Now, some of you might say, well, Mike, you know, I'm sick of you making these videos. If andropause is supposed to happen, if menopause is supposed to happen, then probably adrenopause is supposed to happen too, so therefore we should not take adrenal extracts, we should not consider supplementing with DHA. Yeah, well, this world is different. The stressors, uh, modern you know, 21st century life is different from our ancestors. Uh, many of our ancestors had, you know, if you look at men from just 100 years ago, testosterone levels, orders of magnitude higher in middle-aged men compared to now. You could probably say the same for DHA and other hormones. So 
due to the endocrine disruptors, due to the light pollution, due to the stressors that we're all exposed to, both chronically, what physical stressors and psychological stressors, artificial light, all of this, processed food, meal timing, all of these things are augmenting our physiology. So um, you shouldn't feel bad about supporting that to improve your well-being, to improve your outlook on life, to improve your recovery from exercise and metabolic health and body composition. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for tuning all the way in. We'll catch you in a future one down the road. Bye now.